NASA and Roscosmos have officially declared Soyuz MS-22 not safe to fly for crew and a rescue strategy has been developed with an official statement from NASA and Roscosmos January 11th. So what's the plan to rescue the astronauts and how will SpaceX rescue those astronauts? And why is the ISS facing huge turmoil after this? We'll find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Let's analyze the situation first. Cosmonauts Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin and NASA astronaut Francisco Rubio landed on Soyuz MS-22 September 21st, 2022 at 1354 UTC from the Bacchanar Cosmodrome. On December 15th, 2022 at 1245 UTC, a visible stream of flakes was observed emanating from the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft at the same time as a loss of pressure alerted in the external radiator cooling loop. After multiple days of inspection using the station's robotic arms, preliminary information is something had left a 0.8 millimeter, which is 0.031 of an inch diameter hole in the external cooler radiator located on the service module of the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft. Roscosmos believes the leak in the radiator occurred due to external mechanical damage. While the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft is deemed not safe to fly for the crew, cosmonauts Prokopiev and Patelin and NASA astronaut Rubio are stranded at the ISS, and it's a critical situation as no person is to be there without a spacecraft they can board to evacuate in the event of an emergency. That way they have the ability to return home should they not be able to return to the ISS. So what's the solution? The damaged Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft will be undocked from the ISS, it will be unmanned, and will attempt to return home. Because the thermoregulation system is damaged, re-entry and landing may not be successful. Next, Soyuz MS-23. Russia's next mission, it was scheduled to launch with three Russian cosmonauts in March, but teams on the ground have been working around the clock to move that up to the middle of February. Once ready for launch, a solo Russian cosmonaut Oleg Kononenko will fly the Soyuz MS-23 to the ISS. That would be the first solo spacecraft mission since 2004 when Brian Benny flew Spaceship One on its test flight. The two Russian cosmonauts who've been stranded due to the leak will stay on the station with Kononiko for the duration of the MS-23 mission before they return home together. Also, NASA's SpaceX Crew-6, that's the next mission that's scheduled to launch in mid-February. They were to be a crew of two NASA astronauts, one UAE astronaut and one cosmonaut. But due to the situation on the ISS Russian cosmonaut, Andrei Fedehev has been removed from the mission and he'll await reassignment. Crew-6 will fly an empty SpaceX pressure suit for the American astronaut Francisco Rubio to use. Rubio, who's also been stranded on the ISS due to the Soyuz leak, will stay on the station with the NASA SpaceX Crew-6 for the duration of their mission, which is six months, and then they'll all return home together. So what's the impact of all this? Well, safety is the number one priority in space, and that's why Russia is moving the MS-23 up. And changes are being made to NASA's SpaceX Crew-6, but this will have an impact on the future schedule of the ISS. The Soyuz spacecraft is only able to stay in orbit for six months, so with Soyuz MS-23 going up a month early, the entire Russian ISS schedule will now have to shift forward by about a month. And the ISS must always have one American and one Russian aboard. Soyuz MS-23 can't depart the ISS until 24 or SpaceX Crew-7, if Russian cosmonaut Andrei Fedeyev is reassigned to Crew-7, arrives at the ISS. Crew-6 was already scheduled to launch in February, so the only major impact on the program is that an agreement was made to fly a Russian cosmonaut on Crew-6, and now that cosmonaut will need to be reassigned to a future mission. Now note that this is a developing story and mission details may change, so stay tuned for even more updates. After all, we can see the U.S. and Russia are strange bedfellows as they work to rescue these stranded astronauts. Despite the war in Ukraine dividing the two nations, the U.S. and Russia are working on solving the problem together, reflecting three decades of interdependence at the ISS. Born at the end of the Cold War, the space station's role as a geopolitical symbol of cooperation between the world's most formidable nuclear powers has long outweighed its scientific achievement. Up to now, the White House explicitly has built a wall around ISS and space cooperation and kept it separate from the general pattern of U.S.-Russian relations, said John Logston, 
a professor of emeritus at the George Washington University and founder of the Space Policy Institute. That was particularly true in the last decade, he added, when the U.S. relied solely on Russia to launch their astronauts to the space station up until the first launch of SpaceX's Dragon capsule in 2020. So there's been an explicit but unstated understood policy that as long as Russia keeps up its part of the bargain in the partnership, that we would not do anything influenced by external factors like Crimea or Ukraine. The busted Soyuz and potentially stranded spacefarers are just the latest episode in this long-running marriage of necessity. We have a crew member on this vehicle, and so Roscosmos has reached out to us, says NASA space station official Joe Montalbano in a December briefing for reporters. The teams are going back and forth. We're constantly exchanging data. The Soyuz leak comes amid heightened concern about orbital debris tied to Russia conducting an anti-satellite missile test last year, blowing up one of their own derelict spy satellites. The blast, called Reckless and Dangerous by NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, left at least 1,500 trackable fragments in orbit. If the coolant leak turns out to have come from the debris created by that Russian anti-satellite test, it wouldn't surprise me, said Ja. Mother Nature is going to show us the unintended consequence of these actions. That could be the real point of this event. Even earlier in 2018, a drill hole in Soyuz aboard a space station, apparently made before its launch, raised tension between the U.S. and Russia. A Russian space official claimed an astronaut had made the hole in a bid to return home early, a claim dismissed by NASA officials. The hole was filled with epoxy. Such increasing tensions with repeated Russian claims of backing out of the station have withered away any official interest in a continued space partnership, even without the war in Ukraine. NASA has committed to continue operating the space station through 2030. Built of a combination of U.S., Russian, and international parts, the orbiting lab has quietly set endurance records for human life in space and set a medical baseline for future Moon or Mars explorers. It was back in the 1990s, a marriage of necessity, said Logston. Russia needed the space station partnership to sustain its human space program at the end of the Cold War. NASA, meanwhile, needed the Russian buy-in to make geopolitics a selling point for the orbiting lab. But it was a multi-decade undertaking, so you have to live with the consequences of past decisions, said Logston. I don't think there's a chance of a follow-on intimate partnership along these lines now. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section down below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.